I was going to record a video that was suggested by you guys about free agency predictions. I mean, you guys have been giving me a lot of good suggestions lately. So I had all these different videos that I wanted to make. But instead, we have breaking news from the New York Mets as Robinson Cano test positive for PEDs again. What this means is that since this is a second suspension, he is going to miss the entire 2021 season and he's going to have to forfeit his $24 million salary. So in this video, we're going to talk about the Cano suspension, what I think about Cano, and what it means for the Mets for 2021 and for the offseason because that $24 million is a big deal considering all the areas of need that we have talked about that the Mets have to address. So if you guys like this video, make sure to leave a like, comment down below like you have, what kind of videos you want to see, what do you think about the Cano situation, and what should the Mets do now? What should their plans be? Because one thing I really want to talk about now is how does this impact the Francisco Lindor trade? Because now it's like, all right, well, we can't really trade Dom Smith, or we can't really trade J.D. Davis as much because now we need certain players to move around. Now, with the way things are, McNeil could go to second base, Dom Smith could go to left field, J.D. Davis to third. So you have ways of working around this. But how does this change the Mets' approach? Do they now have more money for a Trevor Bauer? So that could be something that is, you know, more in line with what they could do. And also, make sure to subscribe, working to 300 subscribers. Tell a friend, let's get started. So, I mean, just the fact that Cano would get caught again is very fascinating because we knew that you Cano, for his career, until his suspension with Seattle, had been on a Hall of Fame track. It looked like he was destined to be a Hall of Famer at second base. Then once the PED stuff happens, you're like, okay, that pretty much eliminates you from going to the Hall of Fame once you have something like that. Then we had this whole idea, well, is Cano still the same player? And we really didn't know after his first year at the Mets where he was very inconsistent and hurt. Then in his second season in 2020, the short season, Cano was great, hit over 300. And now I have a feeling that we may know why Cano had such a good year and that very well be because of PEDs. And that's just very unfortunate because all this time we thought that Cano was a much better player than this. And we finally were seeing the offensive production that Robinson Cano could bring because of what this trade means to the Mets. I mean, this trade is so important in Mets history because of how long Cano's contract is. The fact that he's not just here for one or two years, it's more like five years, which is now going to turn into like three more years. And the fact that we lost some of the farm system, mainly Jared Kelnick, that everyone is still is upset about. And I understand why, considering how long the Mets have needed center field. So I definitely understand that. I thought that getting Edwin Diaz at the time, who's supposed to be the best closer in baseball, was a pretty good deal because of how much the Mets have needed bullpen. And they still do need bullpen because we are not completely certain about Edwin Diaz either. Not so much drug performance, but more so regular performance because of the inconsistencies that we have seen with Edwin Diaz as a member of the New York Mets. I think that for this team, I just really want to see how do they approach this now because now another guy that becomes more realistic is JT Real Muto because the fact that you're not paying Robinson Cano $24 million this year, that is a huge hit off your salary books that you now could spend elsewhere, which the Mets desperately need. So my thing is that like best case scenario for me is that now that I could put Jeff McNeil at second base because we were talking about in the comments yesterday, do you move McNeil to third? You can't really do that because how bad he was at third last year. There's an increasing likelihood that there will be no DH next season. So how does that affect where you put Dom Smith and some other players? Well, now you know that you could put Dom in left and move JD down to third. So one of the things that I'm thinking about now is can the Mets give Trevor Bauer a crazy one-year contract? Because I think for Trevor Bauer, it is smart for him to take the one-year deal because maybe next year more teams would be willing to spend. Because even though there are plenty of teams that could use Trevor Bauer, you know, everybody needs more pitching. Not many teams want to spend a lot of money right now. Not many teams want to spend Cy Young caliber money with the hits that they took last year money-wise because of the whole economy and not having fans at the stands. That definitely was a huge deal for all these owners, and we know how much they care about making money. So I think a one-year deal for Bauer with the Mets makes way more sense now. It always made sense for Bauer just because, like I said, he'll be able to go back into free agency where there are many more teams that might be willing to meet up to his demands. And then for the Mets, they could just give Bauer so much money for a one-year deal that he cannot turn down, and he can help them this year and just see how good would a team with Trevor Bauer be. Because if Trevor Bauer does not perform well and he has a four ERA again like he has had in years past, then you know, okay, we're not giving him a long-term deal. But if Bauer is great, if he's as good or better than Jacob deGrom, you got to resign him. you got to give him whatever he wants. So I think that that move now makes a lot more sense. If not that, like I said, I think JT Romuto makes more sense. Or maybe even George Springer. And then you could trade Nimmo, 
Rosario, and then a prospect for Francisco Lindor. Again, that is my package. Take it or leave it. Because now I can't really include J.D. Davis in that trade because I need to play third base. I can't include Dominic Smith in that trade because I need him in left field now. I can't get rid of all three guys. It has to be only two major leaguers. I can't do three anymore. With Cano being gone, I cannot do that. And Jeff McNeil is not in the trade proposal. He never is, never will be. I, I'm not trading Jeff McNeil ever, ever, ever. So just forget about that. I mean, the proposals that they've been putting out there on LB Network and on Twitter and all these other places are just crazy. I mean, you guys' uh, trade proposals are way better than the crap that I've seen put Pete Crow Armstrong in the deal. I mean, these proposals are just out of nowhere because we want Austin Hedges. We have to get rid of McNeil, our whole FAR system. No, get out of here. I don't even want Austin Hedges to begin with. I want Real Muto. I want McCann. I want Yadi Molina. I want Mike Zanino before I want Austin Hedges. So why in the world would I trade McNeil all my prospects for him? So that is out of the equation for me. But now, does someone like George Springer become more viable? Because, again, we have to keep in mind that the Mets have multiple needs. And as much money as Steve Cohen has, we have to be realistic here. He is not going to get Bauer, Real Muto, Springer, and Hand, and Hendricks, and Morton. You know, like he's not getting every single free agent. Even though he has a lot of money, that isn't going to happen. He's going to get one big guy, maybe two. And now that's more likely not having to spend $24 million this year. Now that we have a better idea of what the plan is, who should be the two big guys? I think that's really the question. For me, I think it's Bauer and a catcher. That's the way I look at it. I, mean, you know, I really think that those are the Mets' two big needs. And Steve Cohen said that. It's pitching and catching. And I really want to make that trade for Lindor if the Indians accept my package. If they don't, I'm not making the trade. I am not overpaying for Francisco Lindor. I, I just can't do it this year now, now with Cano being down. So, I mean, th that would be my approach to it. Obviously, everything else would be bullpen. Then I want to get back-end starters, you know, stuff like that. Not crazy money. You know, I know it's not my money, but maybe somebody like Jake Odorizzi or somebody of that mold, you know, just to be a number four, number five starter behind DeGrom and Bauer and Stroman and then eventually Syndergaard. And then you have David Pearson in there as well. That makes for a pretty nice rotation. And just a couple decent low arms in the bullpen. And then I think you'll be okay, I mean, all things being considered, because you know what? For a while, one of the big reasons why the Mets had this logjam was because of Cano. And Cano is not a great defender. We don't know how good he is offensively because we don't know what Cano, not on the PEDs, is like. He might not be any good anymore. Like, the fact that Cano got caught and then was good, maybe PEDs, and then he gets caught again, it shows you that he believes that he needs the PEDs, which is a major red flag for me. I mean, the Mets now, it's going to be really hard to do, but if you have to cut him or whatever, you have to get him off the team. Cano is now just giving you this feel, this vibe, that he is just a guy that is on the PEDs and he just can't be a successful player anymore. And that really drives me nuts because I expected more of him. I praise him. I really want him to do well. When the Mets made this trade, I was very excited, but I'm just very disappointed in Robson Cano right now. And I think all Mets fans are, and I know Steve Cohen and Sandy Olsen have got to be super frustrated because neither one of them made that trade. You know, this is something that Brody did that the Mets had to take on, and now they have to deal with that. So, I mean, I just hope that the Mets can make the most out of it, that it allows McNeil to be in a natural position. It allows Dom Smith to get be able to play since there probably is no DH. I think that's very important to keep in mind here. The fact that Dom gets to play, everybody gets to play now. And then, you know what, if they don't make the trade for Lindor, then he meant his play short or something like that. And then you could go from there. It's just the fact that the Mets can now address those other needs now that they have more money this year. Like I said, they can make the crazy one-year deal for Bauer or maybe another reliever. If that allows them to get Liam Hendricks or something like that, I would be super happy with that. I'll tell you what. I'd rather have Liam Hendricks than I would Robinson Cano. I'd rather have, you know, somebody big time like that and have McNeil in second and Dom in left and JD at third, but also being able to get a great pitcher than having Robinson Cano on the team. I think everyone would agree that that's a much better alternative. This definitely changes the plans for the Mets, not only in the offseason, but in the regular season. So it's going to be very fascinating. Be on the lookout for all these videos that I'm going to make per your guys' request. So make sure to be subscribed so you don't miss it. And until the next one, be safe. Be smart, smarter than Cano, be healthy, and have a good one, everyone.